You are an Igbo girl, you are going for your traditional marriage. And the Igbo culture is you will carry what to look for your husband? What? Palm wine. But your seer, your prophet has told you that if you do that, your destiny is finished. You now go and start negotiating with elders so that you will carry juice or water. If I'm an elder eh, in any village and somebody proposes that nonsense to me, bah, that family will not marry again. Pure nonsense. People will say and see useless things. I'm coming to that. They use palm wine to do traditional marriage rites in Igbo, language, uh, in Igbo culture. Other cultures have their own. Don't carry your, your, your illusory spirituality, your stupid religiosity, and go and be negotiating. Carry the wine. Carry the wine. If carrying wine for your traditional marriage you were to end your destiny, you, you for no even rich here. Something your ancestors did hundreds of years. You know, I've told people sometimes, Christians, sometimes if you as if you they lock your brain, collect the key, and begin to remote you like zombies. Jesus did every cultural thing that his people did. He did all of them. Now, the term religion and culture means different things to different people. While it is difficult to establish exact definitions of both, it is possible to gain an understanding of the concept and their uh, relationships to one another. Now, the major religions of the world are Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and folks' religion collectively command approximately 6.4 billion followers of the world, 7.9 billion people. All right, of the world, 7.9 billion people. So, 6.7 billion are following a religion so that's approximately um 385 million people identify with the non-major religions globally and these religious people create and influence culture so in what ways do you think your culture has influenced your religion and do you think religion should override our culture now please Let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at We Show Africa One with the hashtag We Show. Ah, interesting conversation. So when I saw this video from the clergyman, <laughs> let me hear your thoughts quickly first. What came to your mind? And I'll come to Uti. I mean, I saw this and I agree with him on one hand. I, I don't think... To be honest, I don't know what has happened to us. And I think as a country, and even as a continent in Africa, we are very religious, in quotes. Because, and then people come to you and say, like you rightly said, your CIA will come and tell you, don't do this because. Why? Culture is culture. Religion is religion. Let's each play its part as it should be, right? I don't think that, and yeah, people have personal choices and people can decide to do whatever it is that they want to do, but then let's not now make each one, yes, they, 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 they can be, um, what's the, symbiotic, so to speak, but at the same time, I don't think that we should hold on tightly to one and say, because I am a Christian, of course I'm a Muslim, because I'm him, uh, I practice Hinduism, this is what it should be then whatever else it is that my culture says no i don't think i, I don't think we should do it. i think we should respect our culture and our traditions i'm a very i, I stand culture and tradition in whole lots actually mm. yes. interesting Uti, <laughs> what do you think i think that is sad that we have eroded our culture funny enough for an import let me put it that way um it's so easy to misinterpret things. It's so easy to go overboard because I think that's also the area where we are playing in. Um, Nigerians are not known to do things by halves. We go to extremes, Extreme. right? But it's funny how when other countries who have preserved their culture, we love to see it. We love to watch the whole pomp and pageantry when the queen was being buried, when all of these things, it's all down to culture, right? Um, wasn't it a few weeks ago when the new prime minister, British Prime Minister, um, when the old picture of him was circulating, of him actually putting down, um, I think it was lighting candles or something at the, the front of the, the house on Downing Street, right? Uh, so the, we've successfully eroded our pride in our culture. Mm. Now, because also we really are not passing down 
a lot of the significance of these things people don't understand, right? And typically what you don't understand or what you don't have knowledge about is easy to be misled. Mm -hmm. There are parts of our culture, no doubt, our, our original religion is not Christianity. So there are parts of our culture today that, yes, have um, or different, should I say, traditional religions that have um, negative connotations. But... If it comes down to our different tribes and cultures, it's a representation of who we are. And we are voluntarily giving it up. Even down to, to even language is not being passed along, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of these things we're losing. And it's just sad that we don't understand how much of our identity we're giving up by doing these things and imbibing other things. And these things should be mutually exclusive. They shouldn't really be impacting each other. Mm. But like I said, it's easy to go overboard all in the name of how you interpret one thing um, and replace it for another. I, I want to say more, but I, I think as we go into the discussion, the relevant, uh, uh, what will I call it now? The relevant um, explanations or examples can be given. Can come up, right? So I was just going to ask, because again, this is supposed to be a man of God. A clergyman you know given this kind of conversation so what do you think the major reason is for why it is so quick for religion because yes the question is should religion override our culture and clearly we have established that no it shouldn't be they should be able to operate on their own you know separately we should be able to do the religious thing when you need to do it and do the cultural thing when it needs to be done but all the time we see that if given an opportunity a lot of people would drop culture and pick up religion. Why do you think that is? Because again, I'm trying to wrap my head around, you know, what was that factor? What makes it so easy for you to sell religion quickly and people buy it faster than they would buy culture and cultural beliefs? Where is that disconnect? <laughs> he wants to help me. <laughs> we teach it. Is that? Do we teach it? Hmm. So for you to, uh, for me, the answer to that question in the disconnect is, we don't teach the reason for the culture. Yeah. So like the example that he was given, right? What is the story behind or what was the tradition that led to palm wine being used? You know, now, if you take that whole marriage example, for example, what we think about is a white wedding. What we think about is how we get married. But let me even take it to a different culture. Let's take it to the African-Americans. Back in the day when they used to get married, what did they used to do? They used to just jump over the broom. Yeah. That was the sum total of their marriage ceremony. Today, they've infused that into their own church wedding where you would normally see when you watch the movies, what do you see? When they finish, when they want to turn around, they will put a pretty broom on the floor and they, and they will jump, jump over it. it. Yeah. That's a culture that they've preserved, mm. right? This, the understanding of the history of that was the only way because they were slaves and didn't belong to each other, right? They belonged to their masters. That was the only way between themselves they could make a covenant to say, we have chosen each, each other. other. That was their culture. Mm. They've preserved it till today. And they understand the history behind it. It's the same thing for us. If you ask now, how many people, I'm sure when you were getting married, Ua, they tie you one rapper, they put one bit here, they told you go, they told you come, sit down here. Do, I'm sure in all of that, you were just watching. The significance of it all, you yeah, probably had no clue. Absolutely. You probably never stopped to ask your mother, mommy, why did they do this? Hmm. Why did they do that? As much as I loved my culture, I, I think... I one day had to sit down and go and research and say, okay, there's a lot of ceremony when it comes to Shekiri traditional marriages. And I needed to understand what it was. And it was a very interesting bit of research. And it just came up with a conversation for my sister. My sister was like, ah, she really likes this outfit. And I said, no, this is not our outfit. This is the Edo outfit. Mm. And I started having to school my sister. And then I realized, ah, halfway down, even me, myself, part of, part of my knowledge was missing. So a lot of the times we don't understand the significance mm behind why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. So how can you be connected to it? It is what you understand 
and you have a connection to that you will preserve. Hmm. And because for us now, the thing we have put our pitched our tent on and the thing that we understand and the things that we're actively learning about is now religion. Hmm. Subject to interpretation. Absolutely. Because again, it depends on what they told you and how you take it and then which extreme you are going to take it. Absolutely. To. But I just want to make one biblical reference. Even the good Lord turned water into wine. I just leave it there. <laughs> You know, so I mean, it's so interesting. It's really spot on because, again, I'm just thinking in my head. You, in a week, in a week, you learn something or two about religion. There are some churches that they have Tuesday and Thursday service. Bible some says, churches yeah. have a Wednesday and Sunday service, mm -hmm. right? Then even for some churches, they go the extra mile to have like, um, like foundation classes. classes yeah. I know I've attended. I have I attended from 100 level to 400 level um, classes, <laughs> believers classes in my church, right? 100 level to 400 level. This is like four weeks mm -hmm. of, um, or, or, or even two months or so of 100 level. So like, level, so yeah. multiply that by the number of levels that I've attended. How many people, right, can go into and say this is a school of culture, right? For instance, now the Edo culture, uh -huh. a school of Edo culture, yeah, where Bible. you are learning the culture and you're asking questions just like the way you will study the Bible and everything. So I, I think, the, I mean, it's really spot on why people are accepting more of religion than the cultural parts of you know what we have but, um, yeah. but Chinelo, you, you wanted and to say something i was something. also going to say civilization has also um happened to us as mm. well so people are no longer people believe oh if you if you now if you believe in certain i'm, I'm trying to think of any particular culture that is peculiar to certain tribes now let just any any particular um, culture you can think of any particular tradition you can think about people then think oh because i'm civilized because i now live in lagos because i'm in the city i shouldn't be caught practicing these things so i think civilization has also played a, a very big role in you know shifting people's mindsets from culture and tradition now to practicing mm. religion basically um, you know it, see when you say civilization i i laugh I chuckle because it, it reminds me a bit about because I hear that my Bini history, I, I, I pardon myself in case I <laughs> blunder, okay. but I will go back to read it. But I hear that, you know, when the, the white men came into uh -huh. the Benin kingdom, mm -hmm. then yeah. they saw those lamps on the road, the street lights. And so when you talk about who sold the idea to us that our culture was uncivilized, right? right? Who sold that idea to us? Because when you say civilization, I'm wondering, we were very civil, we were very organized, we were very, you know, I mean, who, I mean, Uti, help me out here, because I don't understand who sold the idea that culture is not a, when you are practicing your culture, oh. you're not a civilized person, hmm. you are maybe, maybe from the, from, from, from the, from the ancients of days. <laughs> yes. So I, again, is it not down to what, first of all, let me try and backtrack a little bit. Um, oh, I remember the conversation we were having um, at the, was it two weeks ago? Mm. And uh, with the born in blackness, right? Yeah. The, the story has been propagated in a way that it benefits the propagators of the story. Mm. Now, in the absence, nature uh, abhors a void. It abhors in the absence you. of information, something else will fill the void. Mm. So we have actively, as a people, bought into the concept that our culture is not right. Hmm. I mean, Nollywood doesn't help because Nollywood too has shaped at least a generation of people who now see traditional elements as fetish, as, hmm. and this is not to say they aren't fetish ones and negative ones, but we've sort of created this negativity around what should be preserved right so we've essentially absorbed somebody else's culture and culture is learned it's not a culture of what right we've all come together to accept and invite this culture now that our ways were wrong our ways our were way bad were cake. Our, our ways were, were negative yes. right and because we are not as in let's even just take the most basic part of our culture let's take language how many children today speak their mm. native dialect? Oh, wow. You even try, you speak Hausa. But think about our generation, our, our own children. Mm. How many of them today speak the language in a way that 
my mother was very particular about you must speak your language if you don't speak your language you don't have an identity how many people are imbuing that into their children today that is just language mm. so if you don't even have language how do you even want to learn more about your culture, culture. Wow. take what we wear today as traditional outfits we've left our traditional outfits beyond the bright what we saw today is we are sewing foreign styles with local mm. fabric or what is our wait, local fabric? wait 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 so do you want me to come tomorrow and tie wrap out my chest because that's <laughs> my traditional <laughs> outfit like adam ma eh, really <laughs> Okay. Round your way. I, will, I, check, it, right? I will check with the NBC code. That, see, listen, <laughs> you, know, you know me, I can come out naked. Because if you allow me. Take what, <laughs> take what we wear to work today is a mm. good example again, right? What if you Can you tell me that a man that is wearing native, like up and down, doesn't look smart? Mm. But we've defined our own dress code as suit and tie. Is it ours? No. In, okay. truth, in this heat and in this weather, <laughs> should you be wearing suit and tie? Let's take when it. When you're not inside this heat. But, so do you see what I mean? We've, we've left the culture. We've accepted somebody else's culture. Absolutely. And that's what has become mm. learned. Mm. And we've allowed ours to be eroded. Because you go to other countries and you go to castles that are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. You walk through, you take pictures. Mm. This is somebody that, this is our countries that they will say they are Western world, they are first world countries, but they preserved that culture. They mm. preserved it for Absolutely. decades. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a break. When we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation and we'll open our phone lines. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing something really interesting. We're asking, should religion override our culture? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa, one with the hashtag Wayshow. Our phone line is now open. Remember, turn off the volume of your television set when you're calling us, and the number to call is 70 two five zero zero seven seven four nine that's the number to call all right so i mean this is a very interesting conversation right Uti, if you leave me chinelo <laughs> i will wear my wrapper <laughs> tight on my chest wear my beach wear <laughs> and i will come here as long as you people don't tell, yank me off air well i'm good but hey I, I and i think i get where Uti is coming from because i know that now even us as a, as parents mm -hmm. our generation we are teaching our children Mandarin, we're teaching them German, we're teaching them Spanish, we're teaching mm -hmm. them French. French yeah. We're forgetting that they have traditional languages, languages you know, yeah. local languages that they are not. I mean, you, my children struggle with learning the Yoruba language in, sco in, in, school. in school. So they were so happy. The last one that just moved on to senior secondary school was so happy to drop the language because at least you, you are not yeah, obligated yeah. to do it once, once you yeah. are past GS3. Yeah. As simple as that language, somebody has sold it to us that is not, is, we sound barbaric, we sound, you know, uncouth, we sound, you know, all of those things, right? When you are, so now people are dumping, mm. you know, what they are supposed to embrace and embracing what they are not supposed to embrace. Again, religion, why it is now a lot more even acceptable. Most religious body, what do they use in passing the message? They, they pass the message in English language. Mm -hmm. You see your pastors wearing, they don't wear the traditional outfit. Outfits, yeah. The pastors are wearing the suit and the tie. The pastors, you know, so it's, it's kind of like now hitting home why, you know, you would see that people would naturally mm -hmm. want to just drop everything yeah. culture because yeah. it seems like, and again, you don't hear gory stories of ritual killers, mm -hmm. of all these people using, like, maybe there's a, a death in the land and they have to bury with some, some heads, you know, mm -hmm. you, you know, um, go and get virgins and all of those kind of things. Those are the stories that they sell about mm -hmm. culture. culture yeah. The other good part of the culture, like, for instance, now, why do we have to wear the beads when we're getting married in the Edo culture? Do I know? No. But I wore it anyway. So now when, 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 when we're having this conversation and I'm beginning to now hear these things you know gives me okay yes yeah, so a clearer picture to understand that this is why you're not appreciating what you have and that's what most times what you see is people that lived abroad or are still living abroad mm -hmm. right they appreciate and they value oh, 
our not only not only our our food our language our dress every single thing yeah, they value it yeah. more and appreciate it more mm -hmm. because they have seen you know the western world that some of us have I not love. been privy yeah. to see yeah. and they know that come there's something richer you know back more. home mm -hmm. you know i was also thinking i mean i i like i said at the beginning of the show right I stand culture and tradition. I try the good part of it. I mean, all those parts of when somebody, I was, I was speaking to my friend, I said, okay, we're talking about culture and tradition, right? So when we say, in Igbo land, for example, in the past, when a man dies, and uh, they say his brother then covets all of his belongings and his possessions, including his, his wife. wife. Mm. That's, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, why should a woman be compelled to be with another man who she didn't love in the first place because that is culture mm. or that is tradition so things like that i think have been uh, those are the ones that, that they are now trying trying to you know let go of. but at the same time i think maybe this is why people have also moved on from mm. culture because now the christian religion or the islam religion has come to tell us that oh it doesn't one have to happen that one man or wife yes. you know you can just leave because your, your, your husband dies you can go ahead to marry somebody that do, that does not have to be your mm. husband's brother you know so people are now moving to moving to religion because they feel it's a more comfortable place mm. to be that justifies every other thing that you think is right mm. in their head so yeah. Uti, let me come to you hmm. I like the example that Chinelo just gave, right? Um, and I still come back to the why in those things. So it's like in the past when people had a lot of kids, why? Because they needed um, people, they needed humans, let's put it that way, to work their farms. So they needed large families, right? Mm. It's the same thing. I don't know what the history is behind that, but there will be something. There will be a reason why that was the rule at the time. Because it's very easy to think if you buy the narrative that we were barbaric, right? And a lot of the time, the old stories are not told from our perspective. When you watch stories like Roots and you watch all those movies about slavery, it's always told from the perspective of the white man, right? How much of that perspective is told from our own side? There are very few movies, I think, 12 Years a Slave, very few movies that actually focus on where and why, the kind of people that we were before the so-called white man came and gave us mirrors and shiny things and guns and whatever. We had our traditions, we had our cultures, and we were running fine. We had our empires. Some of that history still filters down today. I mean, I know we talk about the, um, what's the king that's marrying all the wives? The, the Oni of Ife and how in today, today's world, it sounds ridiculous to marry those, that, that many wives, right? But it's culture. It's what they are trying to preserve before we get to where we are today, where you now are trying to juxtapose the law of um, religion versus the law of the people versus the law of the land. So we're all trying to find a balance of which one we want to strike. And culture is a living, breathing thing. So it's constantly evolving around um, what we are experiencing, what we're living and what we're doing. So we are almost in what I would call the culture of religion now. Religion has become a driving factor for us. It's part of it, it's ingrained in our culture now. So you can see it now impeding these things where people are saying, ah, I don't want, I don't want to drink, um, I don't want to use palm wine. I've even, you know, in some of the conversations that I've had in the past, if you if you look at the traditional marriage ceremonies, normally they would pour some of the the, the gin on the floor, right? For the ancestors. Yeah. Even that, some people will say, ah, you are invoking this, like you are invoking that. <laughs> so I like the part where the priest said, eh, <laughs> the priest said, if it was that, if that was the real factor, then all of you would not be here because they've been doing it for generations before you came. So sometimes we also need to stop and think and ask the why. Mm. Because the why is so important. When we don't query it, when we don't ask ourselves, 
we just accept that oh they said it's wrong or they said it's not and you don't ask why it's like being sheep the sheep dog just pushes you and says oh go into this place because that's what the farmer wants yeah. whether the farmer wants it because he wants to kill to kill the sheep or he wants it because he wants the sheep to be fine and he can share the wool and make money the why of the of the farmer and his dog trying to hurt the sheep the sheep don't care they just do what they're told mm. so what questions are we asking what are we are we truly understanding the impact of our culture but we don't have enough examples was it when uh, the Olu of Wari was being crowned i think i learned i closed so many gaps in my knowledge of my culture that day why because one of the media houses had a a Shakiri historian who was really talking us through the entire process so much that was learned in that experience why can't it be taught why is it not being passed down and it's funny because we come from a culture of storytelling yeah. but even that culture now is lost i mean we'll sit down to do a uh, once upon a time, time, time. Even that one's by lost now. Because, <laughs> exactly. Because now, TV has taken over. Yeah. We are, we, how many local stories? And the local stories that we are watching, the Nollywood and Co., they are helping to erode the culture just as fast. Mm -hmm. The only thing they show us about culture these days is you see that funny man that has the look on say with the red clothes and you know he's just going there to do juju. So that has just it has created that impression that in, so even kids now they feel like anything that has to do with the village or anything that has to do with it is evil. It's evil, you know. And, and they talk about the evil is, forest, the evil this, the evil that. That is wrong. Funny enough, Uti, um, what you said about the Olu of worry, you know, when I because I I know him personally. And I would never have thought that he would want to take up that position, knowing the kind of religious background that he has. They're actually very good Christians, Christians right? Yes. So I was surprised when I heard that he was now going to be coronated the of war. And I asked, I'm like, okay, so all of the traditions of him being, you know, he has to be secluded for a while. They have to do certain traditions. Is he going to do all of those things? And then somebody said to me, of course, if he doesn't do those things, he cannot be crowned Olu of Wari. You know, and it, it, I didn't open my eyes because I then saw posts that he had put up and then his wife had, had also put up saying, oh, they had gone through this process, they had gone through that process. I'm like, okay, interesting to see that people that are actually religious are willing to, you know, go through so these things. I like the word you just used now. So are we, are we breeding religious people or we are breeding spiritual, spiritual people? people? Do we have... Spirit, because again, spirituality mm. is completely different when it comes to practices of religion. Mm -hmm. You know, there are religious practices, but the spirituality of it is what is lacking. Because now again, a lot of churches, a lot of all these people are just focused on the activities. Yeah. The spirituality of the, you know, the individual, the individual is yeah. missing. It's a big gap. And that's why we have a lot of problem where we have today, <laughs> you know. But hey, who are we? Would you, would, would, you, would you really look forward to having like a school of culture? Definitely. And Definitely. I would, a school of arts and culture. It's, uh, it's very important. Do you see when we go to um, Western countries, so to speak, and then you see, you visit a palace or you visit a castle and then you see those ancient, it's, it's beautiful to see, right? So why can't we have those kind of things in Nigeria where people come and then you see where there's culture that's actually preserved. It also goes, and I think it boils down, it, it affects us in every way. It even mm. affects tourism, for mm. example. These days, people are not looking forward to going to places like Olumorok, Yankari Game Reserve, Afi Mountains, because they just feel like, mm, what is there to see? But there's a whole lot to see. If you go to the east, there are those caves. When you go there, and then you hear the stories of how people used to hide, how people used to do... It's, it's amazing. I think people, a lot of people need to begin to encourage and, you know, accept this culture and look forward to, you know, preserving and seeing these things. Because it would even increase our, our uh, what's it called now, income or should I call it GDP in Nigeria. So, mm. so we, we have, it's something we should actually, actually encourage in Nigeria. Mm. Uti, how about you? If you were to advise the government to create a school of culture, how would, what would that school look like? I mean, I totally, I, so... I mean, you guys know now. Me, I went and found a teacher to teach my child Shakiri because not that I can't speak it, but I'm just not patient enough to teach. And I wanted him to learn 
So I also learned it by it being spoken in my house. So mm. I don't necessarily know how to write it properly or how to read it properly. So I wanted to. If it's only that, for the 500 and something plus languages that we have in this country, start from there. Mm. Teach our languages. Let's even document. Let's leave history because history is a very sensational topic in Nigeria. But let's even document our traditions, right? So a lot of the times these days, what do we do in traditional marriages? Even that culture is not being passed down again. Why? Because now you have people that have turned it into a business. So once you have an alaga, the alaga understands that's the person conducting the traditional marriage, right? Speaking for the families. That person is the one that knows all the rights and traditions now, mm. right? So even some of the old, older ones don't even know the traditions. Mm. So if you didn't have that person present to say, okay, this is what we do now, this is what we do next, that gap was, you, you understand that that gap was what created that job, that job function. Mm. That not enough people knew this culture. So somebody had to come and essentially be an officiant in what should be your tradition, mm. in what people used to teach their children to mm. say, ah, when somebody wants to come and marry, this is the culture, this is the tradition, this is it. Now it's left to a handful of people who are passing it down and earning money from it. But this should be something that everybody in your house knows how to do. Do you know how to break cola nuts? Do you know what to ask for, what to expect? The elders themselves is getting lost. Mm. So even if it comes to just those things, back to the question, teach language, teach the culture of even if it's just the marriage ceremony, teach the culture of, you know, burial. What is the real history behind it? Why were these things being done? In some places, they throw you in the water. I'm, I'm from South, South, South. They throw you in the water to know whether you had any hand in the husband's death. In some places, <laughs> they shave your head. There were reasons behind all of these things. We can now, in knowing the reason, mm. understand that something is now outdated. Mm. So we no longer need to so, do it. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. But so it's we no longer serving. It. Yeah. Yes. So we understand it and we say, okay, this was our culture, but this was the reason why. Mm. It's just the same way today we are the twin capital of the world, but this was also the place where they were killing twins. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, funny thing is that, like, for us now, we were circumcised, mm -hmm. you know, as girls. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, growing up now, you now come back and look at it and say, okay, this, you know, this and this and this. So there is, um, um, what's it called? Advocacy against female yeah. genital yeah. mutilation, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, those things, because, again, the idea for circumcision then was the fact that they didn't want promiscuity. Yeah. So that was the, the rationale that was sold, that... Lay, um, girls that were circumcised were not promiscuous but it we, now uh, what's it called it has defiled all of that because it's, it, it's promiscuity happens regardless whether you're circumcised or not yeah. i mean so those kind of cultures i get you uti we then reevaluate them and see okay which one is serving us which is no longer yeah. serving us yeah. let's quickly take our comments i think we ran out of time okay so this one is um, austin from delta and he says this is a controversial topic Culture is the identity of the people, about the language, the food, the dressing, and the dance. There's nothing wrong using palm wine for traditional wedding, but my concern is that most religious bodies don't know where to draw the line. Come to think about it, it's the traditional marriage where dowry is paid that is approved. White, that is approved. white wedding is just complimentary. However, some cultural practices should be jettisoned. For instance, there's a culture where a male visitor is offered to sleep with the host wife. Yes. Yeah, so should we continue to allow that? In land. <laughs> no, please. Wow, I didn't even know that. <laughs> some Christians take chieftaincy titles, and when they die, crisis arises as mm. pastors and kinsmen clash on who will take charge. Yes. Culture is good. But if you're a true Christian, it's important to draw a line and don't get tangled with cultural ties that will subject your spouse to undergo torture in the name of culture. Please think and strike a balance. Thank so you. that part of burial, yeah, it's always there's always an issue. Problem. And that yeah. one is from TV, the mm. TV people. Once you go to their oh, yeah. homes, they will give their wives to you as a gift. <laughs> if I was I'm, a man. I'm I'm in shock. <laughs> <laughs> but Uti, let me hear your comments quickly. Good evening. Um, so my comment says, Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of ways. Should religion override our culture? The answer is no. We should not ignore our culture, no matter the religion we believe and belong to. The earlier we begin to teach our children our culture, the better. They should be taught their mother um, tongue, which is very important. Some clergymen and pastors should be careful with what they tell their congregation. Congratulations to Waze on your third anniversary. How time flies. 
I've never regretted being a, a fan of you beautiful ladies. You are wonderful and amazing. Sister Uwa, you've been a great and amazing host of this show. Keep it up. I really appreciate you. God bless you. That's Daniel Hilo. So thank you, Daniel, thank for you. consistently watching the show. Um, yeah. Thank you, I, I Daniel. Go ahead, Uti, uh, finally. No, I just, I said it's just interesting, all the different examples that we've given. That burial one that you talked about, mm. that one is a very key okay. one. So many things, you know, burial at that time is, is a time of grief. You don't even know what's happening, mm. right? But there's so much. I remember when my mother passed and I was supposed to notify the people um, in the neighborhood where her house was that she had died. And they said, oh, no, that I couldn't just inform them that I need to write a letter, I need to bring a bottle of gin. In my mind, I was like, are you guys crazy? <laughs> I have a million and one things to deal with. <laughs> then I'm supposed to come and then, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's the way things were done. I had mm. to do it. When the dancers came from the village, I paid you to come. They said, no, you must go to the bus to use gin and cola to call them down from the bus. I'm like, are you guys kidding me? <laughs> what <did that? laughs> well, <laughs> so I think, to yeah. Like, ah. So I, I think I think we've we've had a very good conversation today mm -hmm. because the, the crux of the matter is education behind why things are done. Yeah. Maybe it will help give a better perspective. But thank you so much, Uti. Thank you, Chinelo. We've had a fantastic okay. conversation. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us on social media, all our social media handles that we show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly. Follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. All right, so if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. They who seek religion for culture's sake are aesthetic, not religious, and will never again, will never again that grace which religion adds to culture because they never can have the religion. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.